Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Lars. Uh, you probably know me as Shapeshifter off of Instagram. You know, it's kind of funny how that's what I'm most known for. And yet I only started spinning eight rings probably around like 2020 or so. So the truth is I've been spinning props and dancing for over 14 years. And you really only know what I've shown from the past four years. So I want to take a little bit of time today and share a bit of my history with you. So I first got interested in dance when uh, my sister brought me to my first rave and that was at Anime Boston 2008. You know, that probably sounds like super nerdy. It was, but uh, <laughs> um, they actually hired local DJs to play. So they actually had like amazing electronic dance music playing at these events and it was all ages. So. I was able to go to a rave at 12 years old and be exposed to this incredible culture of dance music. The only trouble was I didn't know how to dance. So, so afterwards, I ended up looking up rave dances on YouTube. And that's where I learned about heart style dance and heart style music, like uh, jump style and shuffling. You know, looking back, it's, I'm like, why did I get into that? You know, I'm kind of reminded of the nostalgia and everything, but like it, it was such a, a simple little dance. I could have, I could have really gotten into like hip hop or something like that, but I was so committed to this underground, uh, <laughs> techno rave Thing, you know that I just wanted to stick to stuff that was associated with that right so I did jump style for a little bit and then I learned about this offshoot of jump style called hard jump which was like an expanded move list that made it a little more technical um, you know there's some really cool tutorials out there hello guys welcome to our new jump, jump style, style tutorial, tutorial. Special for Jump Style Russia channel subscribers. Yeah, so I did that for a little while. And you know what was funny was I lived in a second story apartment in my suburban neighborhood. So I had to go outside in order to practice, right? But I had these neighborhood bullies that, you know, would just like, just sit and watch and then point and laugh as soon as I would start practicing. So I ended up waiting until like nighttime to practice on my neighborhood street corner, you know? Um, it was really funny. 
uh, it was this small suburban neighborhood, so it wasn't anything like, I told, I told this to one of my friends and she made it sound like I was you know, in the middle of a main road or something doing this. But no, it was this uh, really small town kind of a thing. So I learned jump style and hard jump for a couple of months before I started to realize it was, <laughs> it was pretty boring, or at least like I got bored with it. So I started learning uh, Melbourne Shuffle as well. And I got so into it. I would go out almost every single night and just practice for like one or two hours. The stuff was so intense as like cardio. So, you know, you really have a limited amount of time that you can actually do that stuff. That was the worst part of doing it at dances too, or raves was just like, you know, you'd be so out of breath so quickly and the event's like six hours long, you know, but the most you got in you is like two hours of actually dancing and the rest is just like trying to catch your breath. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was so much fun. Uh, I would just get so lost in, you know, these playlists of the most ridiculous hard style music. That winter, it got really cold and, you know, there's snow on the ground and ice and that sort of thing. And I had been practicing so much that I literally wore through the soles of my shoes with how I was grinding my, my shoes against the, uh, against the pavement. So one night, on the ice, I didn't realize this because my feet were numb, but I had worn through the sole entirely, through my sock, and then I had worn a hole in like my big toe. And I started to, I didn't notice this until like, yeah, after I got inside and I started to feel pain in my foot. I was like, what the hell is that? And then I saw this and then I saw a huge, not like a huge trail of blood, but just little spots of blood from my footprints going, all the way like through the house up the stairs and that you know like it, it was this trail of blood from me <laughs> from uh my foot because i had practiced shuffling too much on the ice it was uh it was ridiculous but <laughs> yeah i that was that just ended up being like what i did to escape for a while you know was uh just to practice dancing for like an hour, two hours, just at, at night, just so I could avoid these fucking bullies. Um, and yeah, eventually I decided to perform in my high school talent show that following spring. <laughs>
So yeah, here, here I was I, in front of the entire school dancing. It was like a Napoleon Dynamite moment for me, right? And my teacher fires at me with, I wish you had one eighth of that energy in the classroom. Like, what the fuck? Why, why does this have to be me being, you know? Why do I have to be made to be a bad student in front of the entire school like this? I was so pissed off and I didn't have a microphone so I couldn't say anything. So all I did was I just turned away and refused to even look back at the audience and just said, fuck this place, fuck this school. <laughs> oh man, you know, the teenage angst was so real that day. God, it was so bad. And the worst part of this, right, is this is crazy. I didn't realize this happened on the same night, right? But uh, I went back I went back home afterwards, right? And all I wanted to do was just escape. All I wanted to do was just dance again, you know, because that's what made me release all the stress and the tension of everyday life, especially school. And I just got the worst of it from uh, presenting this thing to everybody. God, um, but yeah, so I went home and I went to, got on the little street and started dancing, right? And then I remember looking down and I saw this like gigantic wet spot on the ground. I was like, what the hell is that? You know, then I saw another one form and I realized that it was eggs. And those bullies from my neighborhood were throwing fucking eggs at me. And I did the obvious thing. I just ran right home and I thought, I can't believe this. I can't believe these kids would do this to me. You know, I felt like Quasimodo. It, like some fucking freak that I would have eggs thrown at me. And it just, you know, that that made me hate and uh, just like want absolutely nothing to do with uh, my school at the time. But, you know, what that really did for me though was it made me embrace what I love to do because I understood that even if I would be made fun of for it or even if people wouldn't understand it, that I enjoyed doing it and that made it worth my time. You know, it was a way for me to express myself and in rejecting uh, my school <laughs> as a teenager and stuff, um, that kind of just led me on this journey of becoming a bit of a performance artist. So after that, I ended up getting into glove light shows, uh, <laughs> but I guess that's a story for another time.